From Fox 8 Sports, this is the Overtime Podcast. From the Fox 8 Studios in New Orleans, the Fox 8 Overtime Podcast, I'm Basilio, that is Sean Fazan. Remember to like, subscribe, rate, and review. You guys can find us wherever you listen to and watch your podcast. And if you're watching on YouTube, hit the little bell button right there. You get notified every time we upload a new podcast. And lately, we've been streaming live, too. So we're going to try to keep that trend going. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll mix those in uh, from time to time. Obviously, it's not going to be this one today, but nonetheless, no. <laughs> uh, we'll, have, uh, we'll, have, we'll, have, we'll sprinkle those in from time to time whenever we can, we can get to that. But like Seal said, be sure to like, share, rate, review, subscribe to this channel channel the numbers have gone up we want to see them keep going up we haven't even been, had this channel for a year and yet the numbers have really gone up since uh we started this channel back in march of 2023 so we certainly appreciate that we appreciate your commitment to this content we're going to keep bringing you more and more of that with another friday episode of the fox 8 overtime podcast Sil. all right so as we start every podcast or at least try to Big picture, Sean. Mm-hmm. This last game can go one of two ways here. Mm-hmm. Either you finish eight and nine below five hundred, or you finish nine and eight one game above five hundred. What's what's the deal with the Saints here? What do you what do you think? What do you think the the outcome is? Well, either way, I, I think you know there's a debate to be had about the importance of finishing strong. Those that have checked out on the season don't care about the final outcome. They want to see them with the lowest possible record because <laughs> they want to get the better possible draft pick and all that stuff to reset the franchise. That's yeah. fine. So for that group of people, this is probably not going to be the pod for you. The pod for you, but please keep listening if you are. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but look, there, there's a there's a world of difference. There's a world of difference. Nine and eight versus eight and nine. It doesn't necessarily seem like a whole lot. It, if you look at it quickly, it almost looks like the same record. But and it's only a one game difference. We know that. But it, to me, it's a huge difference, and it's a huge different feeling on the way uh, you can almost look at the entirety of your season. First and foremost, this is the obvious one: winning the game, getting to nominate nine and eight, gives you a chance a fighter's chance mm. at the postseason. And we know when the timing of the game ends Friday, we'll know if the Saints will have won the division or not based off of their outcome and the Bucks' outcome. And then we'll see based off the win or the loss if wild card is even a possibility. So the most obvious thing is finishing strong is of the utmost importance for the day-to-day because playoffs are on the line. And the only way you can get to that playoffs is – or get to those playoffs or into that playoff picture is if you win and finish nine and eight, get the W. Right, <laughs> exactly. But even if the playoffs weren't on the table, this would be an interesting debate because sure. um, let's say they finish nine and eight. And even if they do or don't make the playoffs, that's winning four of your last five games. And though it's only a one-game difference... One is a winning season, one is a losing season, and call me crazy, but the head coach, Dennis Allen, could certainly use a winning season on his resume. Eight and nine, it constitutes an upgrade from a season ago. It does. It is one more win. One more win, but it still would fall in the entire picture, especially after you you kind of regrouped and you finished, you know, you've won three out of the last four. If you finish eight and nine and lost that last game, it would have the feeling of bad, but not bad enough. Probably mediocre would be the more mm. accurate way to describe the season. If you finish that's eight the word nine, we've been using all season. We've been using that word all season. Neither nine and eight nor eight and nine is going to be a cause for celebration. But to me, nine and eight sounds better. It looks better. And if you're the organization, it probably feels better. I remember last right. year they won three straight games in December, and then they absolutely laid an egg in the season finale against Carolina. It was like, what, 10 to 7 or something, the final score. Mm-hmm. And I think at that point, playoffs were already a, a, a moot point. So they weren't going to be able to make the playoffs. But it it really was like, man, if they had won that last game, would you have felt a little different about how the season went? Probably not huge, but it really just kind of left a sour taste in your mouth at the final game of that season. You know, and, and that's that for the fans, I wonder, like genuinely, mm. if, they, if the Saints finish 9 and 8 and they – finish off on this streak to end the season, if that'll be more infuriating than finishing eight and nine, being like, well, that, where the hell was this team well, all season it, long? Exactly, but but yes, absolutely, and we live in this week-to-week existence, so you kind of live in this vacuum, 
But the truth of the matter is, it is a long season. So mm-hmm. what they were in Week 12 is not the same as they are in Week 18. That's why organizationally you don't, especially the Saints, especially since you don't normally see drastic changes and drastic moves in the season. They let the totality of the season play itself out because – Things change. I mean, there were. I mean, how many pods have we done where it felt like a funeral, uh, where it just felt like the fan base was just them. so angry, and it felt like <laughs> things were so down, and they went back to work, they practiced, and then the next week they won the game, and then a different. Then then the emotion shifts, and then it shifts back, and then it shifts back because of that up and down nature, and they really got on a roll, but it never really got on a, a losing streak either. So, if they were to win out, win four of their final five. Again, the people that want to see Dennis Allen gone, which isn't going to happen, that want to see drastic change, they're rooting for the ro- worst possible record. But organizationally, they want to succeed. And I get it. I mean, I get it. You don't do this to lose. No. You, you don't do this to lose. And 9-8, and eight obviously, will get you back into a winning record, something they haven't had, obviously, since 2021. I thought it was an interesting debate because I don't – I probably should have checked this before, but I'm not sure where 8-9 and nine gets you in the draft versus 9-8. and eight. Non a non playoff nine and eight squad versus an eight and nine squad from a season ago. It's probably somewhere between like thirteen and nineteen or thirteen and twenty. And yeah, that is a difference. And you certainly, you know, that may play into your opinion on how they you would want the Saints to finish. But I know inside the organization, they're playing to win. They want to get into the postseason and they want to get to nine and eight. And just, I mean, just honestly, what is Nine and eight just sounds so much better than eight and nine to me. Yeah, it, just, it just sounds so much better to me. As it stands right now, the Saints have, according to Tankathon, yep. which is uh, they they have the thirteenth pick in the draft. So that is where they stand at eight and eight right now. At eight, uh, and eight. Okay. Obviously, that is subject to change with the last game of the week or last game of the season. Excuse me, but I feel like right between what like eleven and. 11 and 18, I would say, is probably the sweet spot for where you would... Probably so, yeah. Like for, for this Maybe a little bit higher as if, they, if they make the postseason. Yeah, it's it, like, possible. Let me be clear here, because I, I, I am not throwing rose petals as, at this team. Mm. You know, sometimes I feel like I, I, I get kind of talked into the Mr. Optimus. <laughs> I'm not that... I mean, I... I guess I am in my you get natu- fried for it in the am, comment am, section. In my, my natural life, I'm, I'm, I'm more of an optimist <laughs> than not, because I don't see the way... I don't see about going about life any other way, but there is no celebration for nine and eight. There is no, yes, they're back. They've made it. They've turned the corner at nine and eight, but there is at least a small perception, at least internally that we have improved from one season to the next. Now let's be fair with this schedule. Nine and eight is still a disappointment, but with this schedule going to eight, and nine, what a a thorough failure. Yeah. Especially with the schedule in which you had to face, not just the easy schedule, but the easy schedule plus the backup quarterbacks. So I think, um, all in all nine and eight finishing strong would be good for the organization, at least to the fact of, they would feel like they're at least incrementally going in somewhat of the right direction. Although no one, no one is stupid. We're no. not going to try to fool y'all. Y'all understand this season has not gone according to plan. But they sneak into the postseason with nine and eight. Uh, anything can happen, and that gives you the opportunity. But eight and nine does not. Dude, this 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 like mid part of the draft right here is yeah. just so so clogged up. You have Atlanta at seven and nine right yeah. now. That as of right now has the ninth pick. And then you go up to twenty three. The L A Rams at nine and seven have the twenty third pick. So it is. Say, a, say that again. I'm sorry. The the Rams at nine and seven currently hold the twenty third spot. And they're going to the postseason. Right? Yes, they are. And so like that's that's what I'm saying. It is so clogged up in the way. You really don't know what you're going to get if you're one of these middle. middle so the, there's a chance teams. you go from like eleven to like twenty. Uh, that that's is, what I'm that, saying. That is a difference. It is a huge. So huge the people. Swing. So so, so there is a huge section of the fan base that are that probably wants to see them go eight and nine because yeah. of that swing and the draft pick. Um, yeah. And I get it. I, I really do get it. Um, I just know for the saints, they want to finish nine and eight. And I know it would just, it would, it would feel a little bit different at least internally for them to get to that winning season. And I know for Dennis Allen who just, you know, his, his coaching record is what it is. And to get yeah. a winning season on his resume, I know he would never brag about it or anything, but it would probably be a good thing for him. But, 
we'll see. I mean, Sunday will bring a, another opportunity, and uh, we'll see how they finish this off. But um, it was I thought it was an interesting debate, an interesting topic to bring up because there really are a lot of different ways you can go. And honestly, both sides have merit. I mean, if you can get the 11th or 12th pick versus the 21st or 22nd pick, I thought it was a little closer No, in range. I thought it would be like 13 to 18, but Dude, dude 11 to 22 is a huge range. Parity has been the name of the game this season. Yeah. There are so many of those teams clogging up that middle part of the draft. Yeah, You are really lost in the sauce if you're so, one of those teams. Well, I mean, what do you think? Because to me... I, Given where the organ that's the other thing. Given where the organization started as far as going all in, winning the division, getting back into the postseason, I think it's probably the best case scenario to finish it out, see it through, see if you can actually accomplish what you set out to accomplish. And if that costs you a couple of draft spots, so be it. But there is that other side of the coin where if if you yeah. lose and you go eight and nine, you get like the twelfth pick and now you got the twelfth pick and you and can play with some some draft capital and move up. And that's know? a reality. That yeah. loss a loss if, if for, for the for the tank fans out there, yeah. a loss would help you because the Falcons have already beaten you once this season and they hold the, the, the thirteenth pick. Yeah. Or the sorry, the, the ninth pick, excuse me. And so with a two and zero record over the Saints, the Saints could probably jump them for a higher pick in the draft. Wow. Wow. And so, yeah, there, there, are <laughs> there is there is certainly strong merit to both sides they, of this. They, the Saints, realistically speaking, could end up with a top 10 pick if all the cards fall right. So it's, it's just the same as if the, the Saints need certain things to happen yeah. to, to make the playoffs. The Saints also need certain things to happen for them to finish with a top 10 pick. Wow. And I, But given where they're at in terms of DA likely coming back, salary cap situation, I, I've a top 10 pick would be great. It really would be great. Even if it's not for a quarterback, even yeah. if it was, I, I still think they want to get themselves into the tournament. Yeah. Um, and honestly, I am more on the line of this season is the only one you can control. And if you got a chance to get into this tournament, even if it's unlikely you make a run, you still got to take that chance. Cause you, 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 you can't constantly talk about next year when the year in front of you gives you an opportunity to, to make a run and no one's saying they're going to make a run, but yeah. I think getting into the tournament, getting into the postseason, I think that is important. And I do think when you weigh it all out, there's always going to be next year. But these this year's, you got to take it and play it out for for what it's worth. So while I understand the other argument, I do think it's important for the Saints to try to get into the postseason and go for it to get all into the postseason. I agree. And speaking of opportunities, the Saints fans – you guys have an opportunity to mm-hmm. fill out the dome this weekend. And Sean, what kind of atmosphere are you expecting at the dome? We we've kind of seen it go back and forth. I remember for the Lions game, there yeah. was a lot of blue in the crowd. Yeah. And then there's been boos at the start of games. Where do you think the 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 crowd is going to be and how the atmosphere is going to be at the dome on Sunday? Well, let's let's just lay lay it out. Biggest rival, season finale, mm-hmm. playoffs on the line. That should be packed to the max, loud, piercing, uncomfortable for the Atlanta Falcons. Mm -hmm. That's how it always should be. I'm not sure it's going to be that way on Sunday. It's hard to predict. It's hard to gauge. But one thing, you know, we have an audience. They seem to let us know uh, how they feel quite often. Um, the ones that are generally more irritated tend to let you know about it more. The ones that are, are you know, the ones that are going to show up tend to keep to themselves. But the disconnect slash almost to the point of dislike of the f- from the fan base towards the organization has been impossible to ignore this year. And this team, um, that gap, that disconnect, dislike, whatever you want to call it, has been as big as I've seen since the Jim Hazlitt era, like the 0, 2, mm-hmm. 3, 4 range where perpetually 8 and 8, perpetually middle, you know, didn't have a, a great love for the quarterback or the head coach. Um, so it, it it certainly has a little bit of those vibes. But even then, the Dome, I felt like, was always packed and was still the home field advantage. Sure. So, But this year has been so awkward when it com- when it's come to that. Now that's a quite a few years later. Yeah, it's been so awkward when it comes to that. Either empty stadium, visiting fans, paper and bags the, again, the instant booing. <laughs> which look, booing happens everywhere. I was in Tampa Bay this past weekend. It happens everywhere, but the the quickness of the booing from the Saints fan base this year has been impossible to ignore. How quickly they're voicing 
uh, their displeasure with this team. So I honestly don't know. I saw a quote. I, gosh, I forget the reporter from Atlanta. But somebody said it's one of the loudest buildings to play in in the NFL. It was the Falcons player talking about preparing for the Superdome. They're preparing for hostility. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure how hostile it's going to be towards Atlanta. I would love to let I would love the the comment section to let us know how it's going to be if they're going, if they're going to be there, um, how it's going to be in terms of reaction to the Saints play, which this Saints team has probably played its best stretch of football of the season the last, you know, 3 out of the last 4 weeks and coming off a very good game in the NFC South. So the atmosphere is going to be something because let's just say the atmosphere is is just okay, not bad, not good but they make the postseason. See, then I think it flips back to, okay, we got to get back in and, and support mm-hmm. our team because they're back in the postseason, especially if they win the division and host a plone playoff game. You can't play anymore. You got you got to show up and you got to be there uh, for your squad, especially if you spend all that money in season tickets. And look, I'm so detached from the, the fan experience because I've, I've been doing this for so long. Sure. But I saw a sign in Tampa Bay of some of the beer prices and nacho prices and everything else. Whew. Like, that's a lot of money to spend. That's a lot of money. to yeah. that, So I get it. It's a lot out there. I mean, I saw in Tampa, it was like $15 for a beer. $15 <laughs> for a beer. Wow. I was so out of touch with that. I've, I've been so spoiled in the press box for the last 15 years. Right. So um, I get it. So, and if the product on the field is not matching what you're having to uh, spend to accommodate yourself at, a, at that event, I get it. But um, I do, th- I am curious how it looks Sunday inside the dome. I don't know if Atlanta fans will travel because they've had a frustrating year as well. Yeah. And how many of the Saints fans are going to be there? How many are going to show up for the final regular season game? Probably, quite possibly, the final home game of the 2023 season. Oh, we're going to be able to see the fans if they decide to pack the stands on Sunday yeah. morning when we have Fox A Live tailgate. I will be there. <laughs> so will Juan Kincaid. Yes, and we will. we will have we have plenty of coverage for the Saints versus the Falcons for the season finale. Any final thoughts nah. as we head into this weekend, Sean? Nah, enjoy the game. We'll see what happens. All right. For Sean Fazan, I'm Vasilios. We'll catch you guys on Monday as we break down the season finale. And if the Saints made the playoffs we'll or see. if they didn't. Monday should be a good show. <laughs> I agree. All right, guys. We'll catch you next time.